Each year on September 11th, the Cape May County Board of Chosen Freeholders host a memorial ceremony to reflect and remember on the victims of September 11, 2001. Hello, I'm Lenora Bonifante. The following is our September 11, 2012 program. Now we will have the... I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now we'll have the uh, Star Spangled Banner sung by Deborah Jenkins of Upper Township. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Hey everyone, please uh, be seated if you would please. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, recognize uh, my uh, colleagues on the uh, Board of Freeholders. We have with us today uh, Freeholder Shepherd, who's Vice Director of the Board, Len Desiderio, Will Morey, and Christine Gabor. Also with us today, we have Mayor Marty Palugi from Avalon. We have Councilwoman Nancy Houdanich, Dave Ellenberg from Stone Harbor. We have Mayor Suzanne Walters, Upper Township Committeeman Anthony and Sarah, Dennis Township Jean Glimbaki, and also Deputy Mayor Brian Teefee. First of all, let me thank all of you for being here and, and welcome you. I'm always so very proud when we have Veterans Day functions or we have functions like this because of all of you and the support that you show for all those who have served and have sacrificed for their nation. We're here today to remember the victims and the families and the first responders and also the thousands of heroic deeds that took place. Those heroic deeds that many of us watched that day, a day very similar to this. I, first thing I thought of this morning, I had to give a speech in, in Cape May and I was driving down there and I'll tell you this morning was just like 
9-11 day. It was just, just exactly the same. I, I, I just couldn't get over just, you know, the beauty of, of the day. And with those thousands of heroic deeds that express that protective love and caring that they showed to complete strangers very often. But one thing that did happen is that the strength of this nation, and I emphasize the strength of this nation, rose out of that rubble. And that's why we're all here today, to display the strength of our nation. It just always amazes me how the most intolerant throughout the world would attack us as a nation who happens to be, in my opinion, the most tolerant nation in the world. It's kind of frightening to think that from 8.46 a.m. in the morning when the first aircraft hit the World Trade Center, 9.03 when the second tower, 9.38 when the plane crashed into the Pentagon, at 10.10 a.m., the aircraft went down in Somerset County. Ladies and gentlemen, in an hour and 24 minutes, the entire security of the world was challenged. And our life changed that day. Every one of us, from that day on, not only our lives, but also the lives of our children and future generations changed because of that terrible, murderous act. The victims were from 90 different countries. 90 different countries throughout the world suffered that day. I mean, the, the, the entire world was in sorrow over a group of murderers it's, it's just mind-boggling when we consider just what has happened. So today, we want to remember those souls in our prayers, those 312 innocent souls who will just like us. They were grandparents, mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, husbands, wives, children. And what we have to remember, they were us. They were just like us sitting here. They, they expressed the same feelings, the same love, the same emotion that morning when they left their house. They kissed their loved ones, their, their children, their wives, their parents, just like we do routinely every morning. They had 343 firemen that lost their lives, that sacrificed themselves that day. 23 police officers sacrificed themselves. And I want, I want to remind everyone here, because it's something sometimes that's forgotten when they talk about the war in Afghanistan. One reason we're fighting the war in Afghanistan is because what happened on 9-11. That's why we're fighting that war. And I want to remind you that Pearl Harbor, we lost 2,400 plus Americans at Pearl Harbor, and that started World War II. So the damage that was done to this nation as far as loss of lives was larger than what created World War II for the United States of America. And, but we have seen, we have seen in our righteous resolve that's been carried out by our military that is destroying this threat today throughout the world. And they are chasing these murderers and these terrorists throughout the world. And I can tell you, if anything, we want to be proud of those young men and women that right now are protecting all of us here. So I say to you, God bless the victims. God bless the families. God bless the first responders, our troops. And God bless all of you for being here. And with that, I'd like to introduce Monsignor Peter Joyce from St. Maximilian Colby Catholic Parish in Marmora. Monsignor, for the invocation, please.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we have already entrusted the victims of this violence and tragedy to the arms of your mercy. We recommit ourselves to be instruments of mercy as well. Almighty God, we recall the first responders who sacrificed all in service of sisters and brothers. We pray that we too may serve those in need. Almighty God, we pray this day through the grace of you to strengthen our resolve to be a people committed to truth, to justice. May we always be instruments of your will. We make our prayer in your name. Amen. And now I'm very honored to introduce one of those members of the military and that force that protects us day in and day out. Those young men and women that place themselves in harm's way to protect us. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce Lieutenant Scott Farr, Commanding Officer, Coast Guard Station, Cape May. Lieutenant. Thank you. Board of Chosen Freeholders, elected officials, members of the clergy, first responders, and the citizens of Cape May County, good afternoon. I'm the commanding officer of the United States Coast Guard Station Cape May, located south of here at Sewell's Point on board the Coast Guard's Enlisted Training Center. Thank you for inviting me to speak with you tonight on this day of national significance and remembrance. Today this nation mourns and pauses to reflect and honor the more than 2,900 civilians that, inclu that include the other 400 first responders who made the ultimate sacrifice that day while attempting to rescue their fellow, fellow citizens as well as more than 6,500 service members who have selfishly given their lives in the overseas operations that have followed. We will never forget them. Their sacrifice only strengthens the daily commitment of this nation and every member of the Coast Guard to serve their country. Although I was not on active duty during 9-11, I, as everyone else, knows exactly where they're at when this country was attacked. There is very few, if any event in our lives, where such a detailed memory exists. A memory that is unforgettable, one that stirs up the exact same emotions as if it had just happened moments ago. Everyone was, was affected, regardless of what you're doing, no matter where you're at. Out of the chaos, heroes emerged. First responders bravely went up when others went down, trying to escape the towers. We must never forget the courageous acts that took place on board the other two planes that crashed in Washington, D.C. and a field in Pennsylvania, where ordinary men and women inspired a nation by their heroic deeds and took action to prevent further devastation. Time stood still indefinitely that day and slowly kept forward for weeks to come as the tragedy unfolded on Manhattan Island. The account told through the eyes of many mariners is described in the book, All Available Boats. It may not be as known to others, but it's a story that echoes the same type of response to our brothers and sisters, where mariners of every background assisted their fellow Americans by evacuating them using anything that would float. More than 300,000 people were evacuated that day when a call went out from the Coast Guard asking for assistance, and they responded. Their stories of strength and resilience when hundreds of these boats converged from the Hudson and East Rivers along the upper bay of the New York Harbor to pump water from the harbor, to feed hoses, bring in supplies, rescue people, and to carry firefighters, police, and medical emergency service providers to ground zero. They carried out acts of selfishness, courage, and exemplified the American spirit to save others while disregard for their own safety. These mariners helped mobilize that day what would be, what would prove to be, though many people do not know, the largest maritime evacuation in the world history. 
Each year we're reminded of this day and it will be this way forever. Nothing can change this. We are who we are today because of what happened. The way the Coast Guard operates today is also a direct result of what transpired in order to do our part in preventing future terrorist attacks from occurring. By law, the Coast Guard has 11 statutory missions. The last two centuries, we have safeguarded our nation's maritime ports and interests in the heartlands, seas, and around the globe. The Coast Guard has been responsible for the security of these ports and waterways of the United States during times of war since the enactment of the Espionage Act of 1917. Following the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001, these authorities took on a grave new importance. This includes denying terrorists the use of U the U.S. maritime domain and the U.S. maritime transportation system to mount attacks on our territory, population, or critical infrastructure. In 2000 alone, the Coast Guard conducted more than 10,700 security boardings of small vessels in and around the United States, conducted approximately 37,000 waterborne patrols near critical maritime infrastructures, escorted more than 5,000 high-capacity passenger vessels, naval vessels, and ships, ships carrying dangerous cargoes, as well as conducting more than 1,700 boardings of high-interest vessels designated as posing a greater threat than normal risk or above normal risk and contribute to the intelligence community, all with a force that is slightly larger today than the New York City Police Department. Today, the largest percentage of the Coast Guard's operating expenses are used for the ports, waterways, and coastal security mission, a mission that is carried out each week where our dedicated crews conduct maritime patrols and escort the K. May Lewis Ferry, which transports more than one million passengers each year. Station K. May is the largest small boat station in New Jersey and is responsible for, for many other missions to include search and rescue, maritime security, marine safety, and other law enforcement missions. Station Cape May works from an impressive multi-mission facility and operates the newest small boats that are, more fat, that are faster and more capable than its predecessors. We are always ready and stand by every hour of the day to answer this call. We have made significant progress strengthening relationships with federal, state, local partners, law enforcement, and first responders. We have forged new relationships with community groups and the private sector, and we have empowered ordinary citizens in their hometowns across the country to become active and engaged in keeping the community safe. Looking back, it is amazing to see how the Coast Guard in this nation has transformed since 9-11 and the progress that we have all made. We're stronger, more resilient, and increasingly better prepared. Tonight, as we depart, we should reflect on what can, continues to make us strong today. It is our people that are bound by an incred incredible American spirit that is ingrained in each of us. We're all patriots, those that love, support, and defend his or her country and its interests with devotion. Yet, time is passing, but we will always remember those brave men and women who lost their lives on 9-11. May we never forget those lost and help future uh, generations to do the same. May God bless you and the United States of America. Thank you. And before I forget, I looked right at him. I'd like to also introduce our sheriff, Gary Schaefer. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me, Gary. And now we're going to have a prayer of remembrance by the Reverend James Cesaro of the Calvary Orthodox, Orthodox Presbyterian Church in Wildwood. Reverend, if you would, please. As I pray a prayer of remembrance, it's not from a distance. I was part of the New Jersey National Guard at the time. And on October, September 12th, I was called up to go and start helping with the recovery efforts and ministering to those who had lost family members. Spent time at Ground Zero ministering to the fire department personnel, police personnel, emergency medical personnel, and then spent a month at Fresh Kills Landfill where they sorted out the body parts from the building parts with members of the FBI, Secret Service, law enforcement from throughout this country and many of our citizens of Cape May County as well. Two other chaplains from Cape May County, many soldiers from the 253rd right here in Cape May County. So it's with great vividness of memory that 
I pray these prayers. Let us pray. Almighty and most gracious God, our Father in heaven, thou art our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. We come to thee in the name of thine only begotten and well-beloved Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, asking you to receive our prayers. We remember this day those who died on September 11, 2001. We thank you for their lives, that we knew them, that they were known and loved by family and friends. We pray that you would help us to never forget the good memories we have of them, that we would not allow history, Father, to wipe them from our memories. We pray for those who were murdered that day for justice, that you would bring all of those, Father, who were involved in this heinous crime to justice. We pray for the families of those who were murdered, that you would comfort them as time goes on and grant them peace. May they rest, Father, in you, knowing that vengeance is yours and you will repay. We pray, Father, for those who heroically gave their lives to save others that day. We pray that their example would encourage future generations to likewise live self-sacrificially. And we pray for their families, that you would grant them grace and comfort. May it be of great comfort to them knowing that their loved ones died with courage, giving of themselves that others might live. We pray, Father, for those who were wounded both in the attacks on that day in the recovery efforts and in succeeding days. We think of those, Father, who even this day suffer from loss of lung capacity, from post-traumatic stress disorder, loss of limb, Father, from painful memories that you would heal them in body, mind, and spirit. And we pray for their families, that you would grant them grace, grant them peace as they minister to their wounded loved ones, grant them patience and understanding in dealing with those who they can't fully understand what they went through and what they struggle with even this day. Lastly, we remember those who are still serving in order to keep our nation safe. We pray for our military members, our police officers, firemen, EMS personnel, and other first responders that you would daily protect them, Father, and grant grace and peace to their families. Amen. And at this time, ladies and gentlemen, if the freeholders would join me, we will um, play the uh, wreath, please. Amazing grace. How oh, sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first. I have already come. Tis grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will At this time, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce Chief Conrad Johnson. He's president of the Cape May County Fires Chief Association, and he's representing the Cape May County First Responders.
Connie is also the Cape May County Fire Marshal. So he knows firsthand just how important it is to protect all of us. Connie?